So hello, my name is Eric Ponder. I am an African Studies Librarian here at Michigan State University Libraries. Today's talk focuses on my 360 degree um, documentary film, Sites of Memory. The film was produced in uh, 2019 to commemorate 25 years since the Rwandan genocide. I was initially um, scheduled to screen and discuss my film for this symposium. However, um, due to the novel COVID-19 pandemic, we had to scratch the screening for a virtual presentation. First, I would like to send condolences to those who have been affected by the novel COVID-19 virus. Nevertheless, I am very excited to be here to, to participate in this virtual symposium to discuss the, uh, the production of the film and how the film has been used to date. These slides represent three separate viewings of the film in, um, in the uh, 360 degree immersive visualization room located in the library's uh, digital scholarship lab. So what do I do here? So if you go um, to the little arrow in, uh, in Zoom, if you go to the little arrow next to the microphone icon that you would use to mute yourself. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna skip that slide. <laughs> All right, okay. let's, keep going. let's keep going. So. Um, well, for us to work together. Um, so, so the second slide pretty much was a was a promo for our digital scholarship lab here at the MSU libraries, which you can find um, online. So I skipped that slide and I'm gonna move on. Um, so um, the first set of slides are from a screening last year of the documentary. Students from a history course on mass violence. The concept of the 30 minute documentary is one of a virtual tour. Um, the film explores the history of the 1994 Rwandan genocide through a tour of seven prominent memorial sites in Rwanda. Each site tells a story of death, survival, and resistance. To date, we have scheduled screenings for courses in history, peace and justice, journalism, James Madison College, and the integrative studies in the arts and humanities. We have had over 500 students view the film. And more recently, we had more than 100 local high school students visit for a day to screen the film, listen to lectures, and have discussions about hate-based violence. Here, the students are looking at the historical timeline leading up to the Rwanda genocide. The use of infographics was one technique used to um, situate the audience to the story we, we were attempting to convey, convey. Sites of Memory is the first film specifically developed uh, for, the, for this environment. The room is designed for an immersive visual experience. Therefore, the documentary lends heavily on visuals to tell the story. More specifically, the, fun, um, the foundational structure of the film are the visuals that were shot with a 360 degree camera. The shot of the um, interior of the memorial sites um, virtually placed the viewer uh, into the middle of these spaces. And the uniqueness about this environment and film is that at any time, the viewer can pause the film and interrogate the space the spaces and information in front of them. I posit, um, in a sense, the environment lends to a um, versatility of the film as a unique hybrid of both a digital film and exhibit. Hence, as filmmakers and content providers, we continue to learn how users interact in the space. As an African studies librarian, I have worked in the digital humanities for over 20 years. One of my um, roles as an African studies librarian has been educational outreach, 
specific, specifically for K through 12. As an educator, I have always searched for avenues to teach Africa in engaging and informative ways. Using digital tools to teach about Africa made perfect sense. Some of my earlier projects have taken me throughout Africa to bring the continent into the classroom. You can look at one of my earlier digital projects entitled Johannesburg, the African City. Sites of memory seemed like a natural progression in bringing Africa into the classroom in a unique way. Here, we see students looking at bullet holes at one of the memorial sites. A project of this scope necessitated broad-based collaboration. This documentary was made possible with funding by MSU Libraries, the African Studies Center, and the Office of Inclusion and Intercultural Initiatives. Several people worked on the film, but most notably, Professor Laura Apel in the teacher education and teacher education, and Justin Legs at the African Studies Center. My colleagues in the Digital Scholarship Lab also provided invaluable assistance. It is noted that close to a million Tutsis and moderate Hutus died in the span of 100 days. Here we see one of the constant themes of the memorial sites, and that is the display of remains of those who died during the genocide in 1993. Included with the skeletal remains and mass graves are personal items, particularly clothing and jewelry. Also on display were um, tools of mass murder, machetes, and axes. These sites provided a window into Rwanda's dark history. Sites of memory provide students an opportunity, although virtually, to experience the memorial sites that are a half a world away from the East Lansing's camp. As a filmmaker with a limited amount of time to tell a story, I wanted to make sure that the film was properly contextualized and had as many Rwandan voices as possible. In the film, we use several survivor testimonials, a folk song, a poem, and family photos from the Rwandan diaspora community here in the US. In this slide, you can see contemporary Rwanda, this is Kigali, the capital of the country. Teaching, teaching with film in the classroom is nothing new. There are a number of reasons experts recommend using film in the classroom. According to the Social Science Research Network, 65% of people are visual learners. Films, television, and other media platforms can provide an immediate an immersive window to a better understanding of the world and the issues impacting all of us. As mentioned earlier, the film explores seven sites across um, the country, Kigali, Rambi, Inyamata, Bisuseru, um, Interama, and Yange, and Nairabuye. It took our team two weeks to film the sites and to record survivor testimonials. Filming on location would not have been possible without the support of the Rwandan government agency, CNLG. Some of what, we're, some of what we are learning is how student inter students interact with the 360 room. One user experience example is the seating used in the space. Initially, there were no um, conceptualization of how the space would be used, um, used to screen the film and the type of seating that would complement the space and the experience. On average, we would have up to 20 students in the room. However, I posit 10 or less students would be ideal uh, to enjoy the immersive visualization experience. But in my estimation, the best experience it's when a viewer can stand and walk around in the space. We do have some survey data 
to share from the students' experiences. There has been several excellent documentaries produced about Rwanda, about the Rwanda genocide. For example, um, As We Forgive in 2009, um, Our Memory, Our Future, 2005, Forgiveness, 2011, Burden of My Heart, 2011, and Keepers of Memory, 2004. Eric Kariba's Keepers of Memory comes the closest in focusing on the memorial sites, but the film focused more specifically on the people who work at, at these sites of memory. Family photos also play an important role in humanizing the victims of the atrocity. It puts a face to the victims and sensitizes one to the skeletal remains that are seen throughout the film. On a whole, the documentary film project is in the tradition of previous African, Africa subject related digital humanities initiatives at Michigan State University. For quite some time, MSU has led the field with such projects as the African Digital, the African Digital Online Library, and more specifically, with digital resources such as the African Activist Archive. And more recently, with the creation of a unique online database entitled Enslaved, the people of the um, historic slave trade. Immersive visualization and virtual reality are the next frontier. Oops, did I... Another element that we used throughout the film was the use of maps. We wanted, to, we wanted the viewer to be able to follow along on this virtual tour and the use of maps were a perfect medium to situate the memorial sites and, their viewer, and the viewer. The maps were produced by MSU Libraries Map Department. Our team also collected um, five testimonials from survivors. The footage is close to four hours long. We were only able to use very small, a, a very small fraction of the testimonials in the film. The testimonials, again, brought voice and agency to the project. We are currently exploring ways in which we can share the entire collection of interviews. One method would be to embed the testimonials and, uh, and additional photos in, in the film and make the film interactive for the user. The question is, what else is realizable in this space? The film, which was initially produced to commemorate 25 years since the Rwandan genocide, was provided a template for future film projects um, for this environment. It was truly unforeseen um, to the amount of usage the film would obtain in the integration of course curriculum. Alexander Street Press has requested a copy of the film for their 360 degree collection. I am currently um, conceptualizing my next film project, which will focus on the transatlantic slave trade. The film will explore slave castles in West Africa. When asked which part of the exhibit were most memorable, students stated, it made me feel as if I was there. The feeling of being surrounded by the film and wide view and multiple views at one time got a more realistic picture of what the sites looked like, as if I was there. Justin Legs of the African Study Center was the chief editor of the film. As a team, we learned a great deal about filming, filmmaking, and editing in this environment. Obviously, the images were the central focus of the film. We constructed the story of a virtual tour based on the 360 degree um, images collected and then followed by laying the audio narration 
on top of the images. It is also critically important that the um, that the uh, that the um, documentary isn't a standalone digital resource and that is supplemented with additional educational materials. We are very much interested in developing pre and post learning modules for the film. And we aspire to work with local educators to develop a curriculum around the uh, documentary. I believe another avenue for all the media footage we captured in our film, uh, in our time in Rwanda, is to create an educational is to create educational material for virtual reality. We have we have GoPro footage of touring the Kigali Memorial site, in which we did not use um, for uh, the documentary. MSU Library is keen to capitalize on the success of the Digital Scholarship Lab with the acquisition of a videographer. How do we continue to produce quality content for the 360 room that provide multi-use opportunities for teaching and learning? I would like to surmise that the future is wide open with opportunities to create immersive visualization content. It has, it has been almost a year since the premiere of the film, Sites of Memory. The film has accompanied was accompanied by a traditional library exhibit, workshops on the use of the Shoah Foundation oral history database, and a panel discussion. The 360 Room has proven to be a game changer for teaching and learning. In this instance, the film transports the viewer to Rwanda, and the viewer can virtually experience the memorial sites up close. That up close experience provides the opportunity to extend and broaden a person's world. And it is what the global digital humanities means to me. I've been working in the digital space for many years, attempting to bring Africa into the classroom in unique and engaging ways. I believe we all we are all looking for engaging avenues in which to learn and expand our knowledge. This group of educators are illustrative of that. Part of the learning experience is broadening your, when your world view. And as an African studies librarian, it is essential, it is essential for me to find ways in which I can excite and engage people about Africa and its people. I'm going to wrap up with the last slide by saying thank you. It is my hope that this presentation provides some understanding of the documentary, how it has been particularly, how it has been used particularly in the coursework and in the dynamic digital environment in which it is utilized. It is also my hope that you have an opportunity to screen my film in the not so distant future. Thank you.